Folks, let's talk about hope, the importance of hope. Titus read Hebrews chapter 6, verses 17 through 18, or through 19. He did a super job, but let's go over it once again, just to keep this at the front of our thinking this morning. Thus God, determining to show more abundantly to the heirs of promise the immutability of his counsel, confirmed it with an oath, that by two immutable things in which it's impossible for God to lie, we might have strong consolation, who had fled for refuge to lay hold of the hope set before us. This hope we have as an anchor of the soul, both sure and steadfast, and which enters the presence beyond the veil. Folks, we have an awesome hope. And this is such an interesting text to notice this morning. The book of Hebrews was written, it was written to encourage Christians to remain faithful to God. Many of the Hebrew Christians were being pushed back and away from God, even some by their own family members, being pushed away from Christ and to turn and go back into their Jewish culture, their Jewish heritage. The fact that this letter was written indicates that there had already been some that have done that. So the writer of Hebrews, and many believe it was the Apostle Paul, But the writer of Hebrews was encouraging those that had fallen away and those that maybe were struggling in their faith that there were better things to come. There were better things that were taking place. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 9. But beloved, we are confident of better things concerning you. Yes, things that accompany salvation, though we speak in this manner. So, folks, there's something awesome about our hope, our hope in Jesus Christ. In verse 11 of Hebrews 6, and we desire each one of you to show the same diligence to fulfill assurance of hope until the end. To the Roman Christians, Paul relates that nothing can separate us from the love of God. Friends, having hope, having hope is so important. In Romans chapter 8, verses 37 and 39, yet of in all things, all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I'm persuaded that neither life nor death nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor death nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Jesus Christ our Lord. Hope. Hope is important, and we need to have a real hope that is anchored, anchored in our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. In our lesson this morning, we're going to talk about our hope, and we're going to mention three things about our hope. Number one, we're going to talk about with hope in Christ. We have something to say. We have something to talk about. We have something very special to talk to others about. That's our Lord. Number two, we're going to work to, we have something to accomplish. We have work to do. We have something in which the Lord has asked us to fulfill. And we have a responsibility of fulfilling it. Number three, we have confidence. We have confidence. We have something to hang on to. Even in the darkest of times, we have confidence. We have hope in Jesus Christ. So let's look at these three things today. First of all, God's hope gives us something to say. Gives us something to talk about. People love to talk, right? People love to talk about plans that are coming up. They love to talk about things that are important to them. We have, and I mentioned until yesterday, we have some awesome young people, okay? We have some very good young people that want to honor God. They want to serve God. And is it not awesome to hear them talk about their plans? Talk about some of the things. They've been talking recently about the youth rally. A few months ago, they were talking about the campaign they went on. Our young people like to talk about things that are happening, things that they've done for the Lord. That's awesome, folks. They'll talk about their future, what job they maybe want to go into, what school they want to go to. They're excited about those things, and they talk about it. What about vacation? 
I know some of y'all have been on vacation in recent days. Do you enjoy making plans for your vacation? Do you enjoy getting out of the office for a while? Do you enjoy telling others where you're going and then showing all the pictures when you get home? Folks, we like to talk about our plans. We like to talk about those things. Parents enjoy talking about their kids. And when they're off and on their own, we look forward to talking to them and then telling others that we've talked to them. Guess what? I talked to William and Anna. I talked to Kaylin and Aaron. I think that's his name. Yeah, Kaylin and Aaron. I talk about Michael. I won't do it anymore today, okay? <laughs> but folks, we enjoy talking about things that excite us. We enjoy talking about plans and future events. We have something to look forward to, and we like telling others about it. And folks, that ought to be just as natural for Christians as anything else. We have something exciting to talk about. We have something that, that ought to thrill us that we want to tell others about. Folks, we ought to be excited about going to heaven. We ought to be looking forward to the wonderful presence that God, uh, being with God, and the existence that He is setting up and establishing for us right now. We ought to be looking forward to being with family and friends that have long passed, that, that are in heaven and, or in paradise and waiting for us in paradise. It ought to be exciting. Uh, one of the encouragements, my dad, I've told you, he forgets about my mom's passing. He forgets about others in the family that's passing. And when he's reminded of it, he gets sad. But I try to remind him we got something to look forward to. We have something, someone that we get to be with in the future. Folks, there's examples of individuals in the Bible that look forward to what is waiting for them. Heaven. The Apostle Paul talked about how he was struggling <coughs> because he wanted to stay on the earth and assist others, but at the same time he was looking forward to leaving this life and being with Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 1 verses 23 and 24, for I am hard pressed between the two, having a desire to depart and be with Christ which is better. Nevertheless, to remain in the flesh is more needful for you. He's saying, I'm ready to go. I'm ready to go be with Christ. He's excited about it. Towards the end of his life, Paul told Timothy how he had fought that good fight. He'd worked hard while he was on this earth, and he was now ready for his reward. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verses 7 and 8. I have fought the good fight. I've finished the race. I've kept the faith. Finally, there is laid up for me the crown of righteousness, which, is with, which the Lord, the righteous judge, will give me on that day. And not for me only, but also for all who have loved his appearing. Folks, he's excited about what's coming. Paul related to the Christians in Thessalonica that they need not be worried about their loved ones that had already passed away. He related to them, one day we'll be together with them. We'll be with them again. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, those that have passed away, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if you believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with a voice of an archangel, with the trumpet of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain will be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, comfort one another with these words. Peter spoke of his hope. Peter spoke of the hope of the resurrection. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. And then you drop down to verse 21, who through him believe in God, who raised him from the dead and gave him glory so that our faith and hope 
are in, in God. We've been encouraging one another lately to simply invite others to various activities, to Bible studies, to worship services, to trunk or treat, to song services, and so forth. Folks, we ought to be telling others about our hope. We ought to be encouraging others to come and hear of the hope that is in Jesus Christ. We ought to be so excited, excited about our salvation that is not so excited, folks, that it's, why would we keep it to ourselves? Why not tell others what we're hoping for and what we're excited about? Hope gives us something to talk about, to sing about, to pray about, to rejoice over. Let's, let's make sure we tell others of our hope. And number two this morning, God's hope gives us something to work for. When there's a purpose for work, then the work is more easily to be accomplished. Consider the expectant father that knows a baby's on the way. He has the expectations that cause him to work harder to get the baby's room finished before that precious one comes into the world. What about the young adult that is graduating and got a job? We're going to be, he's going to be working hard with the hope of getting that apartment rent paid, the possibility of a new car, possibility of paying off all those student loans, on and on and on, folks. When you have purpose, you work hard. You work harder. Hope motivates us to work. We have a purpose in our hope for God. And as Christians, our eternal hope ought to motivate us to work hard for Him, to work hard for the Lord. I've been blessed to see our young people for many years catch the excitement and the encouragement that comes from working so hard, again, with their summer campaigns and many other things in which they're involved. They see the positive results of their work and their efforts Cause their ho causes their hope to grow more. And folks, it's contagious. And it even permeates through the whole congregation. When we work for the Lord, the results are, makes our hope shine. It makes our hope grow. Men of the Bible again related their hopes of working and serving with others. In writing to the Christians in Rome, Paul related that he was headed to Jerusalem. And when he finished his work there, he hoped to come to Rome and to assist them. Romans chapter 15, verses 28 through 29. Therefore, when I have performed this and have sealed to them this fruit, I shall go by way of you to Spain. But I know that when I come to you, I shall, shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Paul was working. He was working hard. He was going to Jerusalem, taking that tribute, taking that money to Jerusalem. Then he planned to go to Spain, but through getting to Spain, he was going to go through Rome. He had a plan. He had a purpose through his hope. In writing to Timothy, Paul again related his hope to come to him and be with him, 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 14. But I know that when I come to you, I shall come in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Then the apostle John, in writing to Gainus, related to him that he hoped to see him soon. In, in the third epistle of John, verse 14. But I hope to see you shortly. And we shall speak face to face. Peace to you. Our friends greet you. Greet the friends by name. Folks, these men were working because of their hope. Yet hope for eternal life ought to be our strongest motivation. Our hope of salvation should and does motivate us to serve the Lord with all our heart, with all our mind, with all our strength. Paul relates that he was a servant, a worker of God because of his confidence in God's promise. In Titus chapter 1, verses 1 and 2, Paul, a bondservant of God, an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect and the acknowledgement of truth, which accord, accords with godliness, in hope, in hope of eternal life, which God, who cannot lie, promised before time began. We have hope. It ought to make us work. 
Our hope should motivate us to be sober-minded, to think clearly, to keep our thoughts on wholesome and godly things. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 through 15, Therefore gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and rest your hope fully upon the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not conforming yourselves to the former lust as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you also be holy in all your conduct. Folks, if our hope motivates us to think properly, then that same hope will help us to live pure and obedient lives. First John chapter three, verses two and three. Beloved, now we are children of God, and it has not yet been revealed what we shall be. But we know that when he is revealed, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. It's always important to have something to work for. Our hope through Christ of eternity and salvation should keep us working, should keep us serving the Lord each and every day. But number three, God gives us something to hang on to. God gives us confidence through our hope. Hope is what gets us through the most difficult days and the hardships. If I can find hope, then I have that proverbial light at the end of the tunnel. I can go through my daily chores. I can make it through the difficult days because of the hope that I have of something better. Hope is what keeps me going. And as a Christian, I have the promises of God that offers me the greatest of all hope. I can know without a shadow of a doubt that I can make it through the most difficult times. I can overcome anything this world throws at me because my hope is greater than what this world is and even what this life is. Paul related the power that can be found in our godly hope. Romans chapter five, verses three through five. And not only that, but we also glory, listen, we glory in tribulations knowing that tribulation produces perseverance, and perseverance, character, and character, here it is, hope. Now hope does not disappoint because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit, folks. We've got hope in our lives, and we can overcome anything in this life. The Apostle John encouraged the horribly persecuted Christians at the end of the first century to never give up on the promise of eternity that offered them hope. Revelation chapter 2 verses 10 through 11, do not fear any of those things which you are about to suffer. Indeed, the devil is about to throw some of you into prison that you may be tested. You will have tribulation 10 days, but be faithful unto death and I will give you the crown of life. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the churches. He who overcomes shall not be hurt by the second death. Folks, we've got hope so that we can endure. Our hope in Christ will help us to endure the most difficult of issues. My hope for eternity can even help me deal with death. Death of a loved one, of a spouse, a mother, a father, children. It can help me deal with my own death. For someone in Christ, we recognize because of our hope that death is a blessing. Revelation chapter 14, verse 13. Then I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, write, blessed are the dead who die in the Lord from now on. Yes, says the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works follow them. Folks, when someone that is a faithful Christian dies, that's a blessing. That is a wonder because of the hope 
that is waiting for us. As I was preparing for this lesson, I thought that a good illustration of this kind of hope would fit at this point. How to overcome difficulties, how to, have, how to overcome maybe issues in our lives. So I Googled, I'm, good, I'm, I'm not good at that, but I Googled, okay? And I Googled examples of hope. And one of the articles that I received was entitled, Seven of the Best Examples of Having Hope. I thought this must be pretty good. So I looked into that article, and the first example of the seven best was this, guys, Voyager 1. And you're saying, what? Voyager 1, it's an aircraft launched by NASA. It's a space probe that has gone into, uh, out through our solar system. It was launched on the 5th of September, 1977, and has been operating now for, what, 42 years. It's the furthest aircraft from the Earth, or spacecraft. It continues to travel at a maximum speed of 17,260 miles per second. In August of 2012, it entered what scientists say is interstellar space. The article then said, so where does hope come into the picture. And then the author begins to explain his answer. Given, the, and this is what he said, given the current situation, Voyager 1 has enough power to function and gather information by operating its in instruments until 2025, after which the system will shut down because there won't be any power left. Post that, it will wander off, losing momentum every second till it comes to rest in outer space. Voyager 1 probe carries a gold-plated audio-visual phonograph disc. In the event that the spacecraft is ever found by intelligent life forms from other planetary systems. The author then mentions Carl Sagan, who was a leading space scientist, uh, astrophysicist, and all these other titles. Sagan stated that this aircraft will be encountered and the re record played only if there are advanced spacefaring civilizations in interstellar space. But the launching of this bottle into cosmic ocean says something very hopeful about life on this planet. And then the author of the article says, my opinion, this is a prime example of having hope. Did you catch that? This is one of the seven best avenues, seven best examples of having hope. We've sent out a space probe and maybe some other alien will find it. Friends, this is not hope, this is futility. Christ is hope. Christ is who we can hang on to for real hope. We have a hope that's sure. We have a hope that's true. It, produce, it provides us the strength and the ability to overcome any hardship or any problem that we face upon this earth. From our text, Paul relates the strong, unchangeable hope that we have in Christ. God, determined to show more abundant the heirs of the promise his counsel for us. He confirmed it with an oath. He confirmed it with a promise that by two things, he can't lie. He's not going to break his promise. And number two, we can have so much hope in the promise he's given, given us. I appreciate the song that we sang earlier, Rod. My hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ upon him where there, there's solid ground. Folks, we need to trust God. We need to put our hope in God. And when darkness veils its, lovely, its, its, its horrible 
and that's around us, I have hope. I have confidence. I can believe this oath. I can believe his covenant. I can believe in his blood that brought me salvation. Folks, on Christ, the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. This morning, folks, I hope you look at your lives. I hope you look at your hope. The hope that this world offers is out in outer space. (laughs) The hope that Jesus offers is right before us. There is real hope that provides us a faith that we can share to others. It provides us work to fulfill, and it provides us security both in good times and bad times right now. That hope is only in Jesus Christ. Are you seeking it? Are you seeking such hope? If you are not a Christian and you want to attain that type of hope, it's available for you. We'd love to study with you. We have several that would be glad to sit down and show you how to obtain the hope that Jesus has. If you aren't a Christian, you've just been putting it off. You know the hope that's there. You know how to obtain it. I urge you this morning, truly consider to grab hold. Take the hope that the Lord offers and come to him this morning. Maybe as a Christian, you've fallen away. You've left that hope, and you need to return. We're here for you folks. We care. The Lord is willing to forgive. We're willing to help you find that forgiveness. Or possibly, folks, life has just been hard. And maybe your hope, you know it's there, but it's hard to see. We're here for you, and we'd be glad to pray for you. If there's anything we can do for you this morning to assist you in finding hope, let it be known as together we stand and sing.